This is the third video of the Warm Wire series. We recommend viewing the planning video before ordering products for your system. This video is intended to help you plan a trouble-free installation. It is not intended to replace the instructions provided in the manual. Please read the Warm Wire and Sunstat manuals before installing. Make sure you have your layout plan and the site is ready. The floor should be completely free of anything that can puncture the wire. If you plan to use self-leveling underlayment over the wire, make sure the floor is primed before installing the wire. Outline any fixtures or built-ins that are to be installed later. Before installation, use a multimeter to test the warm wire and sensor. If your electrician is on hand installing the power supply, they can perform this test for you. Set the electrical meter to the 200 ohm range and measure the readings between the black and white wires. This will be black and blue for the 240 volt warm wire. Record the ohm reading in the out of box before installation table in the installation manual. The number should be within the range printed on the nameplate label. Next, measure the resistance between the ground wire and the black lead. It should display as open or will look the same as when the test leads are not touching anything. Contact the factory before continuing if you see a number when measuring between the ground and the black, white, or blue wires. Change the meter to the 20,000 ohm range to test the sensor wires. Place a test lead on each wire. Look up the resistance in the floor sensor resistance chart from the manual to see if the number is appropriate for the temperature in the space where you're testing. Select the thermostat location and have your electrician install the appropriate electrical box. Make sure it's large enough to meet the box fill requirements of your local code. An extra deep box, or a 4x4 four four inch deep box with a mud ring, are commonly used. Conduit may be required to protect the wiring from potential damage through the wall. Consult your local code. Chisel or drill holes for the power lead and the sensor wire in the front and top of the bottom wall plate. If conduit is required, ensure the holes are large enough to fit. Begin installing warm wire by feeding the power leads and sensor wire up to the control or junction box location. Do not remove the label attached to the lead. Take care not to pull the factory splice into the wall when pulling leads into the electrical box. This splice must be embedded in mortar and cannot be bent. If you purchased a loudmouth sensor with your system, now is the time to connect it. If the heating wire is cut or damaged during installation, the loudmouth will sound an audible alarm. Instructions for this alarm are available in the loudmouth sensor video. Start by installing the cable strap at each end of the space wire will span between. Leave a path for the wire from the thermostat location to the closest strap. Cable strap can be cut using metal shears. Place strapping at the edge of the toe kick in front of sink cabinets. Near walls where people do not stand and where trim board may be installed, place strapping three inches from the wall. Do not install warm wire inside closets or under built-ins. Wires must not cross each other and should never be closer than two and a half inches. Attach cable strap to the floor using two-sided tape, spray adhesive, or short screws. Additional rows of strapping should be installed for spans wider than four feet. For layout examples, refer to the warm wire manual. Depending on the thickness of the mortar used, it may be necessary to chisel out a portion of the subfloor to recess the factory connection. To secure this splice, apply hot glue to the floor. Place the wire under the first tab. Bend each tab to secure the heating wire in place by hand. Do not use a hammer. Be careful not to push the tab into the heating wire jacket. Doing so may damage the wire. Feed the heating wire between one row of strapping and the other keeping in mind your desired spacing. Each vertical tab is a visual indicator of one inch spacing. For two and a half inch spacing, wrap the wire around three vertical tabs plus one horizontal tab. For three inch spacing, use four vertical tabs. For three and a half inch spacing, wrap the wire around four vertical tabs plus one horizontal tab. In areas where warm wire changes direction without straps, hot glue can be applied to the floor surface to provide attachment. Once the end of the heating wire has been reached, attach the end splice to the floor with hot glue. Once again, it may be necessary to chisel out a portion of the floor depending on the thickness of the mortar used. If you end up with too much wire at the end, first consider adjusting the wire spacing, but keep a minimum 2.5 inches. 
Never cut the wire shorter. This can cause dangerous overheating and will void the warranty. You may also consider using the additional wire along a perimeter or an area where heat isn't needed but will do no harm. Do not extend the wires into areas that will not have the same mortar and floor treatment, and do not place the wire where it will be covered later by trim work or built-ins. Position the floor sensor parallel to and in between the heating elements. Do not run sensor wire across heating elements. Attach the sensor to the floor with a small amount of hot glue. We recommend that the electrician test the wire again to ensure no damage occurred during installation. You may optionally do this test yourself. If you have any questions when installing the heating wire, consult the manual or contact the factory. Use only approved methods and parts to help avoid possible problems and allow the system to operate safely for years to come. For more information about WarmWire and other electric radiant heating products, visit suntouch.com.